Here's a question for you. How many, how, what percentage, wow, Sammy's ready. What percentage of people do you think are living paycheck to paycheck? Which means, which means like, I only like have enough money to pay for the next month when I get my paycheck. And if my paycheck doesn't come in, I'm gonna be like in trouble. What do you think is like a number? Take a guess as a percentage in the US. 60, 70, 80, 50, 85, okay. You guys are actually kind of close. The number is 78%. Think about that, think about that. 78% of um, all people in the US, not, not like just here, every American, 78% of people in the US, if one paycheck is missing, their family is in trouble. They might not be able to pay your rent. They might not be able to pay for their car payments. They might not be able to pay for their student loans. They might not be able to put food on the table. 78%, this is a big number. And so this is important. This is an important topic. Okay, let's keep going. Uh, here's another question. What, what percentage do you think can't cover a $400 emergency? Like something that's out of the blue, like I broke my leg and an ambulance came and took me to the hospital. Uh, is about $400. 78%. 78%, similar number. What do you think? 84. 84. 60%. 60%. 89. 89. 87. Here's the number. Here's the number. 87. 39%. Uh, You're shooting a little high. I, I was just saying it's similar to the first one. 30, 30. No, no, the number that he says. Anyway, 39% can't cover a $400 emergency. Emergencies happen. If you think that you can't, no emergencies will ever happen to you, you are daydreaming because things happen and unexpected things happen. And so that's, that's what's happening. All right, now last one. What, how many people, let's keep it together, how many people do we think have debt? 90. 90. 97. 91. 91. 91. 91. 91. 91. 91. 91. Eight out of ten people in the U.S. have debt. Hey, eight out of ten is eighty percent, Sarah. Okay, eight out of ten. This is—is is this a small number or is this a large number? A large number. Do you want to be in debt? No. Probably not. Okay, we're gonna talk about this together, and uh, and I want I want us to start like this. What we're gonna do is we're gonna pick some passages from the Bible that give us principles about money. And so everything that we're teaching here is coming from the Bible and it's giving you a, a perspective of what is money like? Because if we don't know how to handle money, if we can't take control of money now, it's going to take control of our life for the rest of our life. Because we can be enslaved to debt. We might not be able to be free uh, to do the things that God has us doing because you know what? I have so much debt that I have to work every day, all day, forever to pay off this debt. And Jesus actually tells us, if you've been following along in this reading plan that we've been doing in Galatians, we, I've been reading this every day and it's so encouraging because it, it talks about how we are set free in Jesus. And sometimes the decisions that we make, including money, get us from being free in Christ and free to do some of the things that he's called us to do to being enslaved to debt and to financial problems and to all of that. And so I'm taking this and it's and there's this guy, you can look him up, his name is Dave Ramsey. I'm getting most of these like thoughts from him. He's really good with money. Sarah's cousin works with him. He hosts his show, it's kinda cool. Anyway, so so here's where we're starting. So what we're gonna do is, uh, is ask some questions as the Bible talk about money. I'm gonna have somebody from out here, uh, Noob, Noob Dog. Yes. Thank you, sir. Yes, you are correct. The Bible does talk about money. We're gonna, I'm going to put up a passage. I'm going to have one of you read it. And then the rest of you, I want you to tell me what financial principle do you think this passage is talking about. All right? You guys ready? Yeah. Thank you. All right. First one. Somebody read this for me. Out loud and proud. Now, out loud. The rich rule over the poor and the borrower is the slave of the lender. Okay. Proverbs 22.7. Thank you, Noopy. Proverbs is full of wisdom. This is where we're getting a bunch of these ideas from. So I want you to tell me what biblical principle, uh, financial principle, are we getting for this? Or what loans. do you get from this? Loans. So, loans. What do you mean loans? Like debt and loans. 
What about debt and loans? You can you can answer or someone else can answer. What about debt and loans? The borrower is the slave of the lender. That's you're reading the words, Noopy. Give me something more. The person who borrows is the slave of the person who lends. Okay. That's uh it's a little bit better. A little bit better, yes. Any other thoughts on that? Like give it to me in words that aren't almost exactly the same here. Maybe use some of the words that Ben used. Give me that. Oh wow. Come on, guys. Wake up. If you have a loan, you are um, obligated to pay off that loan. And in so you do, you're like essentially a slave to that person. Exactly. Thank you, Sarah. That's a great point. So so here's a biblical principle. The biblical principle that we can get out of this is get out of debt. Because if you are enslaved, literally the Bible says you are enslaved to the person you owe money to. Here's the problem, guys. The world that we live in has made debt a totally normal thing. Debt is like completely normal. We go to school, we get in debt. We buy a car, we go in debt. We buy McDonald's, we use our credit card, we're in debt. You know, like whatever we're doing, we end up being in debt. And what the Bible teaches is like, hey, it's not saying that debt is a sin. It's not saying it's the worst thing in the world. But it's clearly telling us, and as we'll go on forward, it's clearly telling us that debt is probably not a good thing. And so I want you guys, you guys are actually now, almost all of you are old enough to understand money. And, and nobody at church ever talked to me about this. And, and I'm, not, I'm okay, like, thank God, you know. But, but I think I would have been better off today if someone when I was 15, 16, 20, 24, 26 now, you know, at any point had talked to me more about money at church. And so I want to give that to you guys, and that's why for the next three weeks we're going to have people coming and talking about it because it's really, really important, and it's important to understand this. So biblical principle number one, get out of debt. Or if you don't have any, thank God, most of you, I think almost all of you since you're old, most, the majority of you are under 18, you don't have a credit card, you don't have debt, you don't have whatever. So try, if you're not in debt, do your best not to accumulate it. All right, cool. So what's the first point? Get out of debt. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, here we go, here we go. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, actually, before I move on, this is kind of cool. So there are different people who will tell you different things about credit cards. So you, you know how, somebody explain to me how does a credit card work. Joey. Basically that you don't, it's not your money, it's the bank's money that you have to end up paying back. Okay, so, so when I buy something with a credit card, whose money am I using? The bank's money. The bank's money. And so, can I buy something that I can't afford? Yes. Yeah, you can, but you're yeah. going to spend your lifetime paying for that. Exactly. So, here's the problem, right? So, for, for our parents, maybe for some of your parents and maybe some of my parents, who come from the Middle East and never knew what a credit card was and heard that they can buy things that they can't afford, they were like, Forget? I can buy this TV? Okay. And so they will go and they'll buy a TV and they'll be really excited about it and they'll pay the minimum on each uh, payment. So when you buy installment. installment, whatever it's called, and they'll pay a minimum. And when they do that, one by one, um, they end up paying interest, which really they're not actually paying off whatever they just bought. They pay interest for a lifetime and they never pay it off and they end up paying way more for this thing that they probably shouldn't have ever bought that than they would have if they just paid for it in cash. Now, here's the differences in opinion. Some people, like Dave Ramsey here, will tell you, don't ever use a credit card. Uh, and I'll actually answer that question as to why uh, in a second. Actually, yeah, here's the reason why. So, check this out. Take a guess. What percentage more uh, do you spend at a fast food restaurant when you pay with a credit card than you pay with cash? Just take Three. a guess. How what do you say? Three. Three. Okay, more guess. Two and a half. Two and a half. Twenty. Twenty. Thirty. Five. Seven. 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 Shoe higher. Fifty. Shoe higher. Eighty. Seventy. You spend seventy-eight percent more money when you use a card than when you use cash. That sounds fake, doesn't it? That sounds fake. Let me tell you why. They actually did research on this. They actually, this is, this is has like factual research done. And they said that when you pay with a credit card, you pull out your card, I don't have my wallet. You pay with your card and, uh, and you get 
whatever it is that you just bought and your credit card back. When you pay with cash, you give the cash and you get the thing that you bought, but guess what doesn't come back? The cash. And so what they found when they did some of this research is that every time you pay with cash, some in your brain, there are pain triggers that go off that say, oh my gosh, <laughs> what's going on? <laughs> Listen to this. Literally any time I have cash in my wallet, I want to know how many of you are like this. When I have cash in my wallet, it sits there. It makes its home there and it like gets cozy and it just waits for a long time. When I have a card, I'm like, here you go, sir. Thank you very much. This is why some people will tell you that using credit cards is actually dangerous. So this is just fast food restaurants. In general though, oh, I didn't have the other fact on there. Oh crap, how do I do this? Uh, in general, it, outside of fast food restaurants, based on the same study, it's 18% more in general. Fast food, it's just 78% because super size, you know, give me more. Uh, but, but this is just crazy, isn't it? It's crazy and this is why credit cards exist because they make it so convenient and there's no pain associated with it and you're not attached to the card as much as you are to the cash. And so something for us to, to wrestle with and maybe for you, if you don't know how to budget, if you spend everything that you have, maybe think about cutting up that card and going with cash because as we can tell, it's a lot easier to spend more with credit or with a card than we do with cash. Just a fun outside Weird principle. Okay, we can move on. Okay, next principle. Proverbs 21.20. Someone read that for us. This is actually the second part of the verse. We'll get back to the first part later. Read it out loud. Loud and proud. A foolish man devours all he has. A foolish man devours all he has. What principle do we get from this? Wasting money. Okay, wasting. What did you say, Saving. New? Saving. Okay, what else? Wasting, wasting in what sense? All of the senses. I like that. Here's, here's what we're saying. We are saying, act your, not age, act your wage. <laughs> That's good, isn't it? Act your wage. What does this mean? That means that sometimes when I get my first paycheck or my second paycheck, I'm just really excited about that money that just came in. So I go to PacSun and I'm like, mom, you ain't coming with me this time. And I'm going to buy everything and I'm going to spend all my monies that I have on whatever I want. And so what ends up happening is I go home and I'm really excited about these things. But then all the money that I just made is gone. And I just lived as if I was making tens of thousands of dollars. And in reality, all I made was $125.35. And all those monies are gone. So this principle that we just learned from Proverbs 2120, it calls us, it calls you a fool. Or a foolish person if you spend all of your money. There's a principle here that we're trying to say, hey, live below your, your income. Like, I, I should not buy a BMW because I'm not making $200,000 a month or a year, whatever it is that they make. I shouldn't buy an airplane. I shouldn't go on these extravagant things because, to be realistic, I, don't, I can't really afford that. But it's, really, it's marketed really well. We can finance it for you. You can pay it off in the next 45 years. Like, you'll be fine, right? This is what they tell us, guys. But we have to be smart with our money so that we don't just spend everything we have and not really think about it. Because, not because I told you so, but because literally the Bible is telling us, hey, if you want to be a wise person, don't just spend everything you have. Be a little bit more wise with your money, and we'll get to the first part of this verse that'll tell us kind of the opposite in a sec. But uh, that's act your wage. All right. Um, yes. Okay. Act your wage. Why do we spend so much money? This is one of my favorite Dave Ramsey quotes. Listen to this. He says, we buy things that we don't need to impress people we don't like. <laughs> we buy things that we don't need to impress people that we don't even like. <laughs> like, I don't know. Like, why did I buy my Red Sox hat? <laughs> because, you know, I wanted to be part of the Boston group. I don't even know Boston people, you know? Why are you buying this? Ask yourself, sometimes, the, it, I, honestly, I think for most of us, it's like sometimes it's clothes. 
why are we buying this $350 jacket when this $25 jacket from Savers will do the same thing? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, you don't have to buy from Savers. I'm not telling you go buy everything from Savers. But I'm telling you, sometimes we buy things that are extravagant and we spend all that we have on them. And it's not really a smart idea. All right, cool. All right, next, next principle. All right, somebody read this for us. This is the first. Nope, no, this is actually a different one. Someone read. This is Luke chapter 14, verse 20. Go for it. For which of you, intending to build a tower, does not sit down first and count the cost, whether he has enough to finish it? Beautiful. What is this principle? What are we learning here? Planning. Planning. Plan what? Finances. Yes. What is a word for that? Budgeting. Yes, mother. Thank you. Budgeting. Get on a budget. If I don't know how much I'm spending, if I'm spending everything and I go home and I'm like, oh, shoot, I have negative 12 cents. Maybe I need to figure out how can I get on a budget. Now, if you don't know how to budget, if you don't know how to work an Excel sheet, let me help you out. There's this app that I use called Mint. Anybody ever heard of Mint? You should all download Mint if you have any sort of credit card, debit card, anything. Download Mint because it actually does this for you. It tells you exactly how much you're spending on fast food. It tells you how much you're spending on utilities, spending how much you're spending on gas, how much you're spending on clothes, how much you're spending on entertainment. It does all of that for you. And then afterwards you can say, okay, I'm going to set a $20 budget per month for fast food. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, I'm going to spend... $100 this month on gas. I'm gonna spend, pick whatever you need to pick, but make it so that you're not spending all of your money. And we'll get to why we're not spending all of our money, more than just being fools, according to the Bible, in a second, all right? Cool. Um, yeah, and if you can't stick to a budget, guys, here's just a helpful thought. Just don't use a card, honestly. Like, here's the big thing. Like, keep your cards at home and then take out cash. Say, like, almost like when we were kids and we would get our $10 allowance a month or a day or whatever it is for you. Um, and, and, we, and we would take that money and that is all we could spend that day or all we could spend that week. That, but that gives yourself a budget. This is all I have today. So I'm going to use it in this way or this way, but I'm not going to go over it because God actually, actually Isaac and I were talking about this today, everything that, that I have and that you have Actually, God owns all that. We read that in scripture. It tells us that everything, in Job 41, it says that everything on earth already belongs to me. And this is God talking. So what is it that we have? What we have is, is actually kind of like we're a manager. Like you are a manager of the money in your bank account. You're not the owner of the money in your bank account. You're a manager. And whose money are you managing? You're managing God's money. And so how would God want you to spend your money? How are you spending your money? Are you spending your money in a way that, that glorifies God? Or are you spending it in a way that glorifies me? And what I want. And what I need. Is there a balance? So, so get a budget and stick to it because we want to budget God's money. Well, we want to steward his resources. Well, it's a big word for us, but that's what we're doing. Okay, going back to Proverbs 21.20. This is the first part of Proverbs 21.20. And this is the second part that we already read. So... Somebody read for us that first part of Proverbs 21.20. 20. <laughs> Proverbs 21.20 20 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not to your own understanding. A foolish man devours all he has. Okay, so we read that foolish man part. That means that talks about literally just fertic all of my... my uh, my uh, paycheck. Fertig is an Arabic word for below all my paycheck. Right? That's a pr pretty good. So what is this first part? Let's focus on this first part. In the house of the wise are stores of choice food and oil. Somebody help me out. What do you think, what principle do we get at Noob Dog? What do you think? Saving. 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 Thank you. Learn to save. And uh, we'll get to this piece in a little bit. Learn to save money and also invest it. And we haven't got to the invest yet, actually, but, but we'll get to that in a second. But let's talk about the safe part first, right? We were just talking about a, a foolish person uses all of the money that they have. Devours, the word devours, just think of a lion just 
devouring it. It's all gone, and there's nothing left of it. On the other hand, a wise person has storehouses of oil, and, and, and we don't have storehouses of oil. We have storehouses of, of money that, that we have. And, and let me ask you this. Why do we need to save money? Now, let's, let's actually talk about this, because am I greedy if I am saving for myself and my family and my retirement? No, why not? Planning ahead. Planning ahead. Why is that? Why is that important? You can't see into the future, so like if something happens, you need money quick. Save it for it. Okay, good. Now, now I want to talk. I want to ask you this, and I don't really know a, a perfect answer to this, but I want you guys to tell me what is the line, because I think there's a line, right? There's got to be a line here, because sometimes. We just save, 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 and hoard, 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 and it's, and it's, we're saving. I'm doing what the Bible says. I'm not devouring everything. I'm saving everything, nickel and dime. It's safe. When does it become, like, bad? Or does it ever become bad? I don't know. What do you guys think? What do you think? Why? Why then? When? Probably when you're not, like, when, like, when you're suffering because of it. Okay, how so? Okay, great. Great. That's awesome. I love that. So maybe maybe God actually wants us to enjoy life. <laughs> you know, he doesn't he, he he wants us to to have a life where we're not we're not scraping by. And sure, maybe for some people that's the life that they choose to live and but I don't think that that's like God's commandment is like be poor, eat the the little pieces of meat off the bone. Like I don't think that's the way that he necessarily wants us to live. Give me more. What else? John, what do you think? Uh, also when like money becomes an idol. Uh-huh. Good. Good. Okay. So maybe I want to save, 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 and grow my money, and grow my money, and grow my money, and then it just it becomes what I worship. It's all that I think about. Any penny that goes out, I'm like, la, 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 la. no, 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 I can't do that. <laughs> you know, it, maybe it becomes an idol that way. Give me another. What? What else? What else? Gio, what do you think? Can you like save it with like no purpose? Okay. Save it with no purpose. Who are you saving it for? You're not even married. You have no kids. You're going to die tomorrow, and you're not, it's going to go to the government. Like, is that what you really want? What? Okay, so maybe saving it with no purpose. What else? Sarah, what do you think? Yes. Nicole, is that what you're going to say? Yeah, it's if it prevents you from being generous. Yes, exactly. Now, remember what we said at the very beginning of this, right? We said that, that God has made us to live free. And if I am hoarding my money I am I'm I'm living for myself and I have actually become enslaved to that money that I have I'm enslaved to that money because I can't I can't let go of it I when God when God puts someone in front of me I can't let go of some of that money because I'm, I'm, I'm too attached to it and so it, it can be dangerous so I think there's a line that we need to be aware of when it comes to saving where it doesn't just become all about me all about what I want all about my future but the last point that we're going to talk about um, is well, I guess I'll wait for it. Well, no, I won't wait for it. Is give. That's like the big, the big part about this money. Like, why do I have money? What is the point of this money? Why did God give me the ability to make money? Is because He wants me to steward His money and give it to places that would honor Him. How can I use the money that God has put under my responsibility to bless other people, to take other people out? for food, to go on, on a mission trip and, and serve in a place, to, to take that money and give it to a church and help the church grow and reach more people and share the gospel in communities. How can I share that money in places where people are suffering and, and we can use our resources to help them out? So we can, we'll get to that in a second, but uh, here's something that I think is really cool. Uh, we're going to talk about interest or invest, investing, sorry, uh, for a second. Because there are two ways to make money. What are two? What do you think are two ways to make money? Investing and earning. Okay. Yes, investing and earning. Tell me if I don't understand what you mean by that. Tell me more. Working, what is what is earning? Getting money. Uh huh. Using your money to get more money. Exactly. Okay. So the first way that I can get money is I go out to work. I get my money from the hours that I work. The second way is to, as the as the as the, as the money people call it make my money work for me. 
Now, that's not in any way a bad thing. I don't think the Bible says that that's bad. I think the, the, actually there, there are parables in the Bible that we look at that talk exactly about this concept. Now, let me give you a really interesting scenario. Let's look at $5 a day. $5 a day is not too much, right? $5 a day, like, we probably all could manage to do $5 a day, right? For the most part. Maybe not fully yet, but in a couple years, we could do $5 a day. $5 a day in in invested at 12% interest. Now, the next couple weeks, they'll talk more about this, but I just want to give you something that is going to blow your mind. $5 a day. Starting now, you can be 14, you can be 25, but the earlier you start, the better. At 12%, 12% is like a little bit higher than S&P 500, so you got to find, S sorry, S&P 500 is like a, a mutual fund. Is that what that is? I think it's a mutual fund. I'm pretty sure it is. It's basically like a collection of companies that you buy stock in. And so, anyway, we can talk about that more later. But, but here's $5 a day invested. Check this out. For five years, that $5 a day will get you to $12,250. let us double it, okay? Let's go to 10 years. In 10 years, do you think it's going to be $24,000? No. No, okay. It's going to be $34,000. That's a little bit more than $10,000 more than if it just doubled with nothing else. Now, let's go, let's double that. Let's go 20 years. If we were 20 years, that 34 goes to $148,388. 20 years, $5 a day. That's a Starbucks coffee. Five dollars a day. In twenty years from now, you could have a lot of Starbucks cups and, and kill a lot of turtles, or you could have one hundred forty-eight thousand dollars. All right, let's go to the next one. Let's say you have saved well for thirty years. That hundred and forty-eight, uh huh, uh, uh, five hundred and twenty-four, five hundred. That didn't just double. That that went up by like a lot. A lot. 30 years, $5 a day, 12%. This is the power of investing your money. Is this like, am I teaching you the Bible? No, not necessarily, to be honest. But I'm teaching you principles from the Bible that can really help you, and I wish that somebody told me this earlier. Because just now, I'm starting to do this. I'm like, here's my $5, please. Let's go to 40 years. What do you think it's going to be at 40 years? A million. 40 years, $1.7 million. 40 years, $5 a day. Take a guess as to 50 years. By the age you retire, you can retire early. <laughs> You're a little too excited. 4 million, 4 million, 7 million, 7 million, 8 million, 3 to 5 million. You're close. 5 million. 5.85 million. 5.85. Now, now here's something really interesting. Watch this. This sounds incredible. We would all love 5.85 million, wouldn't we? Look at what happens if you were like me and were scared to put money in some mutual funds because you were thought that, you know, you just want to put it in your savings account. Listen to what happens if you were like me and you put it in a savings account. Watch that $5 a day, I'm still saving $5. I'm putting that $5 a day in my checking account where it's safe and I, you know, no robbers can steal it. $5 a day for five years, for 10 years, 20 years, all the way down to 50 years. Look at what happens. Five years, I save $9,000. That's still pretty good. That's not that bad compared to 12,000. Yeah, it's 3,000 less, but I can manage that. All right, let's go to, let's go to 10 years. Uh, okay, now I'm at 18. Oh, that's like, that's like half. Okay, let's go to 20 years. How bad, how bad is that gonna be? Oh, 36,000. Oh, oh, 50, oh, 91,000 compared to 5 million. $91,000. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's, this is seven numbers. This is one, two, three, four, five numbers. There's two extra zeros on this number than that number. Do you guys see this? Do you guys understand this? question. Where do we invest? Such a great question. 
Um, before, before I go to that, yes, you're right. Before I go to that, I just want you to see this. I want you, to, I want you guys to see this because I actually, I want all of you to do this. I really do. I want you all to do this because saving for your future is really important. And we are going to, we are, all of us at some point are going to have to spend money. We're going to have to spend money in one way or another. And if God has given you some money so that you can manage it, so that you can then use it to bless people around you, why not start now? Look at this last chart. Look at this last chart. Very similar to this. If you start at age 15 and do that same thing that we were just talking about, by the time that you're age 70, you're going to have 3.2 million. This is a little bit of a different number, but it's similar concept. If you started at age 45, by the time you're 70, that's half a million compared to 3.2 million. The younger you start saving and investing, the more you're going to have. And again, we're not saying that, oh, you should have as much money in the world as possible. I'm saying this money you can use to bless people. You can use this money so that you can bless your church, your community, your family, your, your, the, the world. This is insane to me. And if it's available to us, why not take the opportunity? And I've been researching this for myself a lot because I think it's really important for, for me and Rachel to think, how are we going to pay for our kids to eat donuts when they're hungry, you know? <laughs> they want to go to Dunkin' Donuts after church. How are we going to do that? we got to figure that out. Uh, so, so back to Sarah's question. Uh, actually, Sarah, I'm going to answer. I'm going to finish this, and then I'll go to all questions at the end. Is that cool? Okay. Um, all right. Now, now here's, here's the, our last principle. Our last pr principle. Somebody read this for us from Malachi 3.10. Somebody read this for us out loud, loud and proud. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. Okay. Thank you. This is our designated hitter for the night. <laughs> Noob dog, reading our scriptures. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse. Somebody explain that to me. What is going on? Who's talking? What is he talking about? What does this mean? What is the biblical principle about money here? There's one key word in there. Tithes. Thank you. Wow, that was, I didn't give you any hints there. Tithes. What is a tithe? Tithe. Tithe. Ten. Ten. Ten percent. Okay. The Bible teaches us that what we have belongs to God. But, but God is saying, hey, guess what? I want you to feel free to use that 90% in ways uh, that, you know, manage your household, pay your rent, pay for your car, pay for your house, pay for family. But I want you to give 10% of that to church. 90% is for you. But how about you give me 10 10%? Start with 10%. God, you're giving me 90%? Wow, thank you. I think we often see it the other way, don't we? You want me to give 10%? 10 whole percentage points? Have you been to math class? That's like moving the decimal all the way over one. All that? Yeah, but like 90%. No, no, no. 10%. Isn't it funny how we see it sometimes? God is saying, hey, I'm going to bless you with all this. And I want you to be generous to the church so that the church can sustain the ministries that it's doing and the outreach that it's doing and the, and the, and the blessing that it's doing to the community. Okay. Ah, uh, okay. Now, I don't want to un underplay this. It's, yeah, 10% sounds like a lot, doesn't it? But at the same time, if we are acting our wage, if we're getting out of debt, if we're acting our wage, if we are getting on a budget, if we are doing all these principles that we just talked about, when I do my budget, I say the first 10%, I'm not even going to think about it. I'm going to give that to God. 
Because if I get to the end of the year and I'm like, oh boy, here's my, here's the rest of my money and I have a little bit left and it's, and it's 11%, I'm going to say, I don't know if I can give a whole 10%. I would only have 1% total. So if I start from the beginning and say, okay, I'm going to give before I spend, then, then I'm going to be set up well because I have my budget and I've given to where I need to give first. My priority is to say, thank you, God, for blessing me with what I have. I'm going to give back so that you know, I'm, I'm doing what you've asked me to do. I'm honoring you for giving me what I have. Now, the Bible also teaches that God loves a what giver? Have you ever heard this phrase? Cheerful. 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 Very close to faithful. God loves a cheerful giver. And the more, I, I will tell you this from experience, the more I have given, the more I have enjoyed giving. And it sounds really weird, but it's like, oh, that was felt really great to give. I feel generous. <laughs> I feel like I'm making a difference financially. I feel like I'm supporting a ministry. I feel like I'm supporting a person. I feel like I'm supporting a family. When, when we start to use the money that God has given us to bless people, man, that money that we are using is going to, to be the best 10% that we spend. Or maybe for some of us, the best 15%. Maybe for some of us, the best 20%. Whatever it is for us. But God loves a cheerful giver. And so I encourage you to give. Some of us are already working jobs. How are you giving? 